Welcome to Worthy Ones, the video series where I take all of my number one comics I read for the week and I deem them worthy or not worthy. Welcome back, webheads. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. This is Comic Book Corner 2.0. Hopefully you guys are ready for a great show. There's a decent amount of new number ones that came out this week. And the first one that we're going to talk about today is... Wesley Snipes Exiled, this is issue one. Now, some shops got this last week, others got it this week, so I decided to hold off on a review until this week just to be respectful for everybody. And this one is actually done by Whatnot Publishing, which I didn't know they actually published their own comic books. But speaking of Whatnot, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below. When you click on that link, you'll be able to download Whatnot on your mobile device absolutely for free. And when you make your first fifth when you make your first purchase, you'll get $15 off of that first purchase. So whether it's comics or any other collectibles, guys, that's $15 for free and it doesn't cost you anything. No strings attached. There's no like annual fee for whatnot or anything like that. So get yourself something nice courtesy of Mike Spider Slayer. Going back to the comic, Exiled Issue 1 by Wesley Snipes is a dark one. It's not for the younger audience. You know, you got explosions, sacrifices, you know, bones being ripped out of people's backs. I mean, all the stuff that you would love to read as a younger kid, right? But they shouldn't. Uh, very interesting story here as we get to see our detective who is Wesley Snipes by the name of Roach Washington witnesses a sacrifice that is going on and he's trying to stop it. But a bomb goes off. It kills all these people. It, it disintegrates the flesh off their bones and it kills everyone except him. Him. Why doesn't he die? We don't know. And for some reason, he's been exiled off the force and whatnot and sent off to do different detective duties. A year has gone by. He teams up with another detective and all of a sudden we start seeing suicides. And in these suicides, we see this spleen ripped out of people's uh, bodies, right? Or their spines, I should say. And they're trying to come across who did this. So it's definitely a murder mystery in the whole thing. And uh, in the comic book, we find out that his detective friend here is his partner in crime is kind of behind everything that's going on. It had lots of action. Uh, again, there was a mystery element to it. The villain seems like a character from Mortal Kombat. This is definitely a comic book that maybe almost reminds me of a 90s comic book, right? So I'm gonna deem this book worthy. You know what? I wanna see what happens with issue two. I wanna see who the guy is that's ripping out people's spines. How long will it take to get issue two? I don't know, but it was okay. It wasn't the best comic book, but it definitely intrigued me to read an issue two and seeing what Wesley Snipes has to offer for his book. So I'm gonna grade this book a C, a C. It was average. Like I said, I'm just intrigued by the story to see where it goes. I do wish that the uh, word bubbles in the comic were bigger or the dialogue in the word bubbles were bigger and in the dialogue boxes, you find yourself squinting at the whole thing. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. All right, you ready guys? Here we go. Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, issue one. So if you're an 80s kid like me, you watched plenty of Masters of the Universe, right? Prince Adam, Orko, Skeletor, Tila, Man at Arms, who is your favorite Masters of the Universe character? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know. So when I saw this book, I was like, oh, I got to check it out. And then I found out like later on after I already put it on my pull list, it's kind of like a Edge of Spider-Verse thing or, or like Elseworlds story where you get to see different versions of your He-Man character. And I was like, hmm. I'm like, I don't know about this. So I start reading it and we get to see the beginning, how Skeletor has fallen. And Prince Adam here, it's kind of like down on his luck. He's just like, I hate being Prince Adam. He's like, it's so depressing. I'm like, I like being He-Man, you know? So when he has to be Prince Adam, he's like all depressed. So then when we see the sorceress in, um, 
and uh, what's it called? This guy here, I don't even remember his name. They're like, well, let's see other versions of our hero to see if he's any better and whatnot. So they're just like exploring the multi multiverse of different He-Men, right? So you get to see in this story like a dark version of the character. Um, and he turns into like this shadow He-Man or this dark He-Man. And every time he does that, it gives power to castle grayskull which is evil and he was he was doing it he turned himself into this he-man uh to save orko and whatnot so he's like by the power of horror skull or something i don't know it was just weird i was like this is a little off i'm not sure if i really like this right and then we get this other one where i was told that the artist that does this was who did grew the comic strip grew or the comic book grew and uh you know, at first I was like, oh, I'm not gonna really like this. Uh, and then as I read it, I loved it. I actually really enjoyed the story here because it was comical, it was funny. It was something that you would love to see in the Sunday comics. And it's about He-Man getting recruited to stop Skeletor because he's got two of the power swords that give him all the power. And we do get nods to the original toys, which was fun, so you get like, um, what was the vehicles that you get? You get battling ram. Uh, you wind up getting uh, what is it? The um, uh, what is it? Attack track. You get the talon fighter. There was all these different things that the sorceress kept on bringing to He-Man to stop Skeletor, and he kept destroying it, no problem. But then at the end of the day, these two come to a common ground that they love like playing video games with each other. And it was like you were a little kid. It's like, what do you want to be? Player one or player two? And he's like, I'll be player two. It's cool. You know? And so I thought that story of this comic book was so great. I really had a lot of fun with that. Um, and then the second, and then at the end of it, it was just like, okay, well, we're going to go to different universes and we're going to see what else has you know what else we're going to explore so basically this is just like an anthology book of different versions of he-man yeah and so like you know i don't know if i want to read that so i'm going to deem this book not worthy even though i really love that second story they're not going to all be that way and i don't feel like reading a edge of spider verse version of he-man that's it's not what I signed up for. I wanted ongoing stories of He-Man, Masters of the Universe, fighting Skeletor, fighting all the bad guys. We need a comic like that. Don't need other versions of He-Man. We just don't. Like, come out with a main book first, then maybe come up with a sub book. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, I'm going to give this book a B. I really enjoyed it, but I'm just not going to continue it. Okay, guys, here we go. So, you're not gonna expect that I would pick up something like this, right? I'm not an Archie fan, but I am a horror fan. And this book was a horror comic book. And this goes to Betty, The Final Girl, issue one. And I also really love this cover. Uh, definitely reminds you of some kind of horror movie. And based off of this cover, it's like, oh, is she gonna take on this guy right here? And I was like expecting that in this comic. Now it is a one shot, as you can see right here. So I was expecting, okay, this could be just like a badass story with Betty taking on a creature or something like that. And unfortunately it wasn't anything like that. Unfortunately, even more, it was like an anthology story. And I really thought it would be something different than that. And I was disappointed, right? So. You wind up getting this story with Betty going out on a girl's weekend and she gets volunteered to babysit, unfortunately, okay? Now, when looking at this comic book, I really enjoyed it. I thought the characters looked actually phenomenal. I thought Betty looked gorgeous. The, the colors were bright and vibrant and the horror scenes were actually pretty cool. But all it was was her watching a bunch of movies. She falls asleep and you see all these different horror stories that actually happen. And sometimes while reading it for the first time, you might not know what's real and what's fake. And I thought that was a kind of a cool twist on it. And it seemed very suspenseful at times. But at the end of the day, this is not the story that I wanted. So I'm going to deem this book not worthy. I could have spent my money on something else. And 
I was hoping for something than this like anthology book, right? So unfortunately, it missed the mark for me. It was entertaining read, but I would have spent my money elsewhere. So I'm gonna give this book a C. It was average, right? It just, again, I said this in my haul, I was bamboozled. You think one thing's going to happen and something else actually happened. So I would say pass on this book if you were thinking about it and buy something else. Here we go, the next tie-in to Sins of Sinister. We have Nightcrawlers, this is issue one. What a great looking cover as we get this Nightcrawler assassins created by Sinister to create havoc on Earth. This takes place 10 years later and the artwork in this book is phenomenal. I think Paco Mandina hits it out of the park. You gotta love the colors, you gotta love all the different types of characters from these Nightcrawler assassins, or they're called the Legion of Night. You know, they have like Toad and Spider-Man and like X-23 and Pyro. Like looking at this book while reading it is just a visual treat. It's a visual masterpiece. I absolutely loved it. However, reading this story at times, I couldn't wrap around everything that was going on. Does that make it a poor book? No, absolutely not. This actually has story threads from Legion of X from it that you might not get or understand. And you might not get always a clear motive of what's happening in this comic book, but it was still an entertaining read. We have characters that is like Ghost Rider and um, uh, Banshee mix. We got Nightcrawler and Spider-Man who's called Wallcrawler. We got the Wagnerine. It was so interesting. And then you have this um, by the team, by the characters named Vox Innis and Mother Righteous, who are these two who have been uh, planning this takedown on Mr. Sinister uh, for these past 10 years. And they come across this plan. There's this power that they use to uh, change these nightcrawler assassins into good guys, which was kind of cool. There was a sacrifice that happened with one of these good guys. Like I said, there's a lot of, a a lot of action but there's a lot to wrap around your head, wrap your head around on this whole comic book. And so I'm going to deem this book worthy. I think if you read Legion of X with those story threads and you've been reading Sins is Sinister, I think you're going to have a fun time with this comic book. You might want to read it a couple of times, but I have been overly impressed with the two tie-in books that I've had to do with this main event so far. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna grade this bit book a B. Uh, fun read, great artwork. Like I said, it could go over your head. So take your time while reading it, or maybe read it twice. So even though this book is a continuous story, it still has a number one on the issue. So I can consider this a number one, right? Murder World, Moon Knight, issue one. Such a great story. If you guys haven't read this yet, look for Murder World Avengers. That kicks off the whole thing. Then we go Murder World Spider-Man, Mar Murder World uh, Wolverine. Now we're on Murder World Moon Knight. And then the next one is going to be Murder World Game Over. And this is a book about Arcade who had a Squid Games-like scenario. He's recruited a whole bunch of civilians. Put them in this sick game to basically try to survive all these levels or kill each other. The final person gets a ton of cash, right? And now in this book, we're down to the final four contestants. And what this book does is it really reveals the overall plot of a character that's been inserted into this game. And she actually works for Hydra. And she is this secret agent. And she has to go and infiltrate Arcade's base, try to take him out, because she is trying to steal LMD technology that Arcade has. Hydra has LMD uh, Mark V technology. Arcade has Mark 7 technology. So she wants to take out Arcade. She is planning on winning the whole game, which she is very close to. She's teamed up with the other three contestants to try to infiltrate his secret room where he produces the whole entire game. Let's just say things go balls to the walls in this freaking comic book. It's explosive, there's lots of action, and if you read the last volume of Black Widow, okay, Black Widow 
is a major player in this comic book at the end of this issue. And she's out to get revenge on Arcade for what Arcade did to her in her last volume. This book is freaking worthy. That's right, guys. Such an awesome story overall. I honestly wish they did not number these all number ones and just do one, two, three, four, five. So it'd be easier for people to actually you know, read this series. That's the only thing I find wrong with it. So at the end of the day, I am going to give this book an A plus. I had so much fun with this book. I don't even care about the whole number one thing, right? Because it makes me be able at least to talk about it on this show right here. This is definitely a recommend store. Okay, so this book I picked up originally for the absolutely gorgeous artwork, The Last Barbarians issue one. I mean, if the story wasn't gonna be good, at least I had this cover. Now, <laughs> when reviewing this comic or talking about this, I'm gonna put my dirty hands on this one. Even though this is a gorgeous one too, I just, I really love that one a lot better, okay? So, when I read the synopsis of the book, it seemed like an interesting plot, right? It was like a barbarian who's trying to protect her brother. He, she can't find a job because she's really a jack of all trades and she's a wanderer and she likes to do job to job to job. And uh, she finds herself getting in some trouble from here or there. She can't just stick with one job. And in this world, you gotta stick with a guild. It, it, otherwise, your reputation goes down the toilet. Now, in this comic book, we learn about the main character of Sylve. I think that's how you say her name. I'm not sure. Like I and and she her real name is Silver, but it's not spelled S I L V E R. It's like S Y L V E R. I don't know. Let me know how to say her name in the comments below. Regardless, she's a great character in this comic book. All the narration, all the storytelling comes from her, and she's telling you, the reader, the experience that she's going through in her world. And I absolutely love that. It gave me like John Burns vibes of uh, She-Hulk back in the 90s, right? And she's a character that is good at heart. She's right, but she won't take shit from everybody. And I love her experience. And her trying to find a job was very intriguing. You can't help but feel sorry for her because at the same time, she's trying to take care of her stupid brother. And, uh, you know, she does one job that's really wrong and she can't find a job elsewhere. So at the end of the day, she's about to get kicked out of the place that she's living. She comes across a stranger that is off going to offer her a job and she's like well what choice do i have you know and even though this guy is kind of frowned upon and doesn't have a reputation if she takes this job she might not ever get another job personally but she's like what choice do i have i don't i can't make any money so she's off to go on her next adventure and she's going to get on this crazy pirate ship or ship and uh, we don't know this adventure yet but we do know that there's more characters at play, and it's these two characters right here. Now, whether they're friend or foe, uh, we kind of don't know yet, but this book was definitely worthy. I cannot wait to read the second issue of this to see where it goes, but if our narration or storytelling continues on with our main character like this, I'm going to love this book. I love reading her experience in the actual world this book was an a plus for me again guys so definitely if you're on the fence or didn't hear of the last barbarians issue one go out there now pick it up this could be the next hot thing yeah great stuff so I deem them worthy or not worthy. Now I want to know in the comments below, what did you guys think of the comic books that you've read so far this week? What were your favorites? Do you have any recommendations for me? And of course, guys, if you love my content, I'll leave you my newest comic book day haul where I show you everything I picked up for the comic book week. And of course, guys, always remember, keep buying, keep collecting, but always, always read those comics. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.